You're listening to The Dental Guys, episode 78. What makes a good implant continuum? And in this show, we're going to talk about what you need to do if you're looking to get started in dental implants from start to finish, A to Z. Wes, it's all about finding a system that works. Finding system, finding a mentor, Mm. being a leader, we heard tonight. How to be a leader to start placing dental implants in your practice. Yep. And guess what? Brad, the dental lab guy, joins us with a special guest. That's right, who has recently done exactly what we're talking about, taking it from start to finish, learning what it takes to implement dental implants into his practice. So for those of you who are interested in getting involved with implant dentistry and you haven't found a way to do it, this is your chance to hear what the dental guys have to say about how to make it happen in your practice. Get ready to take it to the next level this week on The Dental Guys. This episode of The Dental Guys is brought to you by the Dental Crafters Network, your implant restorative connection. From surgical planning to patient-specific guides, quality implants, and final restorations, the Dental Crafters Network provides one relationship with infinite possibilities. Call 1-800-472-8302 today. That's 1-800-472-8302. Do you want to be able to understand, place, restore, and implement dental implants into your practice? Well, we've got the course for you, Restorative Driven Implants, taught by the Dental Guys. Restorative Driven Implants is coming to Nashville in 2019. Head over to RestorativeDrivenImplants.com now to sign up. That's RestorativeDrivenImplants.com. And welcome to this week's episode of the Dental Guys. I'm John the Dental Guy. And I'm Wes, the dental guy. And Wes, this is uh, this is kind of a different interview, really, than what we've ever done before. Right. I mean, it's not often <laughs> that you actually get to interview somebody that you've met through teaching and kind of mentoring and somebody that's really uh, become kind of a, um, you know, I don't know, the, the relationship we have with Brad Foss that we're going to be talking to tonight is... It's really cool because you, you've got a guy here who comes to Restorative Driven Implants. Um, we got to meet him there. We got to do some teaching. And from the time I first met him, you know, he, he immediately he was intense a little bit at the beginning. Like he was intense. Right. He wanted to know. You could tell that his whole way of thinking about dental practice was going to change, right? Yeah, from the time you he met wanted, him. He wanted to drink in the knowledge. I mean, it's automatically that he had the passion to just like, take what we were saying and start applying it. And, and really, I think that that's what you want in a student that takes a course is to just drink it in. And man, I mean, it, I really appreciate Brad for coming on yeah. our show and talking a little bit about yeah. restorative driven implants and what it's done for his practice and maybe what we can do for you guys. But really talking about like implementation, you know, right? What because did. this is real world. I mean, he, you go to a course and... I mean, we've all done this. You go to a course, you learn some cool stuff, and then you come back and you don't exactly know what to do with it. And, and so, you know, we're going to be talking about in, in his life, like he, he's, he has been going through that exact thing of, you know, you learn about dental implants, you, you, you want to do it, but how do you actually make that happen in your practice and what does it look like? And it's not all, I mean, it's kind of messy a little bit. It's never completely mm. smooth. There's things you have to, figure out there's buy-in you have to get from your team. I mean, you, you've been through it. It's, it's a, it's a big deal. Yeah. He did all the right things and he's still growing as a, as a, a you know, a new implant placer. And, um, it's been, it's been a good, uh, a good journey for him. And we hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, yeah. John. Yeah. And I've got a couple, about, couple of, couple of yeah, announcements here. A yeah. A couple of announcements. announcements before we get into the interview, some pretty exciting things. Um, First, I think there'll be you'll be interested if you listen to uh, last episode we did. We talked about uh, Zerk's product, Pink Petal, which is a pretty cool um, mm-hmm. uh, re- isolation and um, suction type of product for especially useful for hygiene. And uh, we talked about it. We really like this product, and our hygienists like this product. And Zerk reached out to us. They heard about the uh, review we did on it, and they said, "Hey, we'd like to offer." Your listeners actually a, a promo code for this if you're if you're interested. So 
Uh, so if you go to uh, Dessert.com and you, uh, you want to learn uh, or you want to order this product, if you enter the promo code DGPP, so that's going to be Dental Guys Pink Petal DGPP, they will give you uh, a special deal on Pink Petal. And it's something that, you know, when we get the opportunity to review products from companies that we trust, uh, we're all about that. And I think that when you get a company that's actually interested in backing that up by saying, you know, we're willing to give you a, uh, a promo code, that's, that's pretty awesome. So we're excited yeah, about great. that. Yeah, we appreciate Zerk for sponsoring, um, you know, and taking care of our listeners and helping us out to, you know, bring you guys, uh, you know, products and really companies that, that we really think that are just really trying to do things right. And, uh, you know, we're trying to bring you guys some, some stuff that you can actually imp uh, start implementing right away. So, yeah. yeah, you know, something else, uh, a couple of years ago, um, we had, uh, Justin Goodbread from Heritage Investors on the show to talk a little bit about, um, you know, what you should be doing financially in your practice. We talked about some tax savings and you can go back and check those episodes out. But, um, Heritage Investors reached out to us as well as Justin Goodbread, and uh, they um, have come on board to actually help provide you guys with a little bit of knowledge each week uh, for the next year. Um, we're going to have Heritage Investors uh, speak to maybe some financial tips, a uh, tip of the week financially per se. And we're going to work this in in each episode from here going forward um, for the next year or so. We really appreciate um, heritage investors coming on board. And if you're interested in what they have to say and what they might, uh, can do for your practice, um, check out the link in the description below. Uh, we really, we really appreciate, uh, heritage investors and what they're doing for the dental community. Yeah. I mean, this they is a company that understands dentistry and, you know, that's yeah. the thing that I think is, you know, really kind of rare, you know, when you have yeah. a, a financial planner, company, financial planning company that, that understands your profession. And, you know, we, we've, we could, it's a whole other show topic, but we could just tell you in short, we think that it does matter, uh, when yeah. you have somebody who understands what you're up against with your overhead and your day to day that, that actually can help you plan for retirement, plan for right. investment, plan for transitions, Taxes, transitions. Uh, yeah. And so really these somebody, are timed. I think these are cool because they are timed tips that match kind of what you should be looking for throughout the year. And we're going to start those this week. And as you're kind of approaching the end of the year, he's going to be coming back on at each episode. And, and you'll be able to kind of start thinking about what you should be looking for throughout the yeah. year. I think it's good. I mean, I've, I've already listened yeah. to a few of them, and they're fantastic. So Yeah, so, um, so here we go, right? As we get into the Brad Foss interview, here is your first Heritage Investors Financial Minute. This is Justin Goodbrand, and here is today's tip. Now is the time of the year to do tax planning. Instead of waiting until April of next year, take time to update your financial records and estimate your income and expenses. Then meet with your CPA and your certified financial planner to see what tax adjustments you can make while you're in this calendar year. Remember, once you roll past December 31st, you lose the ability to make some tax adjustments. For more information about today's topic and other dental related topics, head over to financiallysimple.com forward slash dentist. Until next time, make it a great day. This tip is for informational purposes only. Please speak with a competent financial advisor regarding your specific needs. Justin Goodbread is a registered investment advisor with Heritage Investors. Visit heritageinvestor.com, financiallysimple.com for additional information. Well, welcome to this week's episode of The Dental Guys. I'm Wes, The Dental Guy. And I'm John, The Dental Guy. And welcome. Man, this is kind of a different venue, a different feel. It's low-key tonight. Coffee, Look at the lighting. Coffee cabin. Look at the lighting. It's the coffee cabin. It's the coffee cabin. And we're so here. Except cheers. for me, I got great cheers. juice. Yeah, cheers with the... I'm, <laughs> What's, I'm the cheers. I'm, I'm out. I'm out. Yeah. 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 Right over here. Oh. Sling it. Who Sling it. If you're watching this on yeah. YouTube... I mean, Kind of hey, like listen. grape juice to a coffee fight. I mean, I'm just not sure. Well, you've, about had, your, yeah, you've had your fair share. Yeah. So this is yeah, the Brad and Brad show. Welcome, Brad. Brad. Well, Brad. Brad show. Well, yeah, first of all, for those that are listening and not watching, you know, uh, Brad, the dental lab guy. 
Yeah. And uh, you, you don't know, always get to see them like this. Yeah, you know? not always. Right, not always. Yeah. And Special. then we'd like to introduce first time guest to the show. Long time listener. Yeah, long time listener. Um, we didn't <laughs> even ask. Can, can we use your last name? I mean, we're allowed. Yeah, go oh, ahead. Okay. Absolutely. So this is Brad Foss. Now, Brad, we've had an interesting day today, but really, I want to I want to talk about who is Brad Foss. Oh. The mm. man behind the myth, the, the legend. myth, the legend. Mm. Tell me, tell me, tell me who you are, how you got started, and what what are you doing today? Uh, quick synopsis, I guess. I graduated Marquette Dental in Milwaukee in '07. Um, been practicing in small town Ripon, Wisconsin, for eleven years now. Same practice. Ripping mm. good cookies. Ripping good cookies. No longer there though. Oh. They're long gone. What a shame. Mm. And uh, how small is the small town? Seven thousand, seven thousand okay. five hundred. All right. Home you and me are kind of in the same wheelhouse. Yeah. And uh, been there for 11 years, uh, two awesome partners, and uh, that's it, man. Why dentistry? Oh, that's a long story. Well, <laughs> hey, we got, we got plenty of time. It's a long podcast, right? It's <laughs> a long story. Yeah. So um, I guess I'll give you the, try and give you the short version. I was an undergrad, not really sure what I was going to do, something medical. And uh, my girlfriend at the time, now my wife, was a oral surgery assistant. Oh, hmm. and uh, shadowed uh, the doctor she worked for several times. I wanted to do medicine, dentistry, PhD. Didn't really know. Didn't have a real solid direction. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, worked for two years doing pulmonary research, and ended up absolutely hating it. Hmm. Uh, so I knew the PhD role wasn't for me. Never really wanted to to teach in a college setting anyway. That lab rat in you just no, wasn't there. No, right? I was a lab rat for two years, and that was two years too many. Yeah. Hmm. And uh, sorry, Brad. You want to be with sorry, the- Brad? <laughs> what are you guys saying? <laughs> different Brad, lab. Different, different, different kind of dental lab. lab. Different, kind of lab. <laughs> different kind of lab. So you <laughs> wanted to be where the people are. Yeah. As <laughs> I wanted to contact people, not killing <laughs> rats all day. Damn. Yeah. I wow. killed a lot of rats. Wow. Yeah. So. Um, Anyway, I uh, kind of fell into dentistry. I wasn't one of those guys who, you know, always wanted to be a dentist. I kind of fell into it, uh, found it in my, uh, you know, 20, early 20s, and uh, ended up absolutely loving it. So here we are. So in the last few years, you know, what's gotten you excited about dentistry? Um, well, I mean, the, the obvious answer is implants. Yeah. So, like, how'd you get rolling in implants? Tell us kind of your journey with implant dentistry. When did it start? You know, where have you kind of come from? Where are you at now? Um, you know, I started off my career. I wanted to get a really solid base in dentistry. I wanted to get a really solid base in how to be a dentist. That mm-hmm. sounds maybe kind of cheesy or corny or whatever, but I wanted to, you know, I wasn't a business guy. I, you know, we own a private practice, wanted to figure out how to deal with staff and how to do a killer class two composite mm-hmm. and how mm-hmm. to do a really quality crown prep and, you know, all those other, you know, bread and butter dentistry yeah. type things. Yeah. And, uh, I started to get more and more interested in surgery. Um, wasn't really sure what route to take. I was doing a lot of research about what, where to go from here. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I've had Brad, the dental guy as a lab, as my lab for, Years, number of years, and uh, found out through him or through the grapevine. I forget exactly. Anyway, you, you know, you're putting on courses. Uh, started taking courses through Brad, through Dental Crafters, and that started the whole journey, the whole process. Wow, mm-hmm. this is not an advertisement, but no, no, you know, it's, it's just uh, the truth. It's just honestly, the way it worked out. Um, appreciate the Dental Crafters Network for sponsoring this episode of the Dental Guys, John. Yeah, I mean, you know, here we got, you know. It's, it's, a lot of times, you know, when you have people that sponsor the show, right? Um, it's kind of just this thing people go, this is just kind of like a sponsor. Right. But, you know, I mean, there's a reason these people why. have actually helped you be a better dentist, right? Oh, God, no question. Yeah. I owe, I owe, I owe him and Dental Crafters a lot, a lot. Man. Teach you a lot, right? Oh, yeah. See, because he can't talk right now because, you know, <laughs> he's it's about ready to cry. And that, because, yeah, because he's, <laughs> he's, got an he's choking back the tears. Yeah. <laughs> but no, in all seriousness, I mean, you know, a great lab is what uh, kind of makes us yeah. what we are. And, and, you know, we can't, I mean, you can be a great dentist if you don't have a great lab. You, you kind of look like you're not good. And on the other hand, you can be pretty good and the lab makes you great. And not only did the lab, in your case, make you a better dentist from your lab work, but actually helped you to point your direction where you needed to go, Right, which is pretty cool. 
You know, what about, you mentioned surgery was something you were interested in. Mm -hmm. What about surgery for you? You know, here you are 10 years into your career and you're, you've kind of getting things figured out. You know, at 10 years, I feel like kind of you start figuring out, hey, I kind of, I kind of like this gig, you know, I kind of like what I'm doing, but there's some things that I really like. Was surgery something you really liked? Is that, is that why you thought you wanted to bring this on, you know, this whole... I don't have a solid answer for that, to be honest with you. Um, I, I, love, I, love, I love doing bread and butter dentistry. I, I love mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. I, really, I really love it. Um, What's bread and butter dentistry to you? Because we use that term loosely a lot. So. Yeah. Um, all right. I love doing, you know, composites, mm. crown and bridge, uh, dentures. Uh, <laughs> I hate endo, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but you know, it got to the point where I knew I wanted to. I felt like I got really good at what I was doing, and I wanted to expand out and kind of do something else. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I had never really done much "quote unquote" surgery of any of any sort, really. You know, much beyond extractions. Um, and uh, I enjoyed doing implants. I, I enjoyed restoring implants. I should put it that way. I enjoyed restoring implants. And uh, wanted to branch out, see what else was available. Mm. And and I guess you know Brad, the dental lab guy, kind of picked up on that that you wanted to kind of maybe take it to the next level. Brad, do you remember that conversation? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I remember when Brad was talking to me. Basically, wanted to you know get into more surgical, do more surgery, and we were offering classes. So yeah. you know he took our first class, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, we did some. Kind of weekend was, warrior course. Weekend warrior. I think it was like an implant 101. Or yeah, 101 and 101 and 201. And uh, he just was super excited. First guy that I've had in our classes that we did classes for, I don't know, probably seven years where we were training, you know, general dentists on how to place implants. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of it surgical guides, some freehand. And uh, Brad, his first guy, came up and says, I'm in. I'm in. Whatever, whatever I got to do, just... Just get me set up. Let's roll. I was balls to the wall. And it was like, let's do it. Let's do it right now. <laughs> I'll right ne- now. I'll <laughs> never forget, Brad. You were in my class, and I remember I showed one of those videos that I showed today was taking out that canine, and I remember watching your astonishment to like you were kind of like putting your you, you shaking your head. You just couldn't fathom taking teeth out a traumatically like this. And no, it's a paradigm shift in what, right. you know, what I was taught, right. essentially. And before we get into that, though, I mean, you you kind of fell in love with surgery. Yeah. You know, you kind of fell in love with like, hey, this is cool, and I want to learn more about it. And so you didn't just stop with just those weekend warrior courses. You were like, I need to know more. Mm-hmm. So tell tell us a little bit about that, because I feel like that a lot of people – they maybe don't know like how to take it to the next level. Like they get a taste, maybe something at a CE course. It's a quick course. Maybe they take a day course and something. Why is that not the end? And why shouldn't it be the end? Because you said, you know, I like composites. Well, you had to go somewhere to learn composites. Mm-hmm. You had to have somebody show you how to work, you know, do it. And, and it had to be multiple times. It couldn't, you had to get some reps in. Mm-hmm. So why, what about, um, in, you, you get in, you got to taste the dental implants, but tell me what it takes to really learn something like this, this particular uh, specialty. That's a pretty deep question. It is. That's why yeah. I'm asking it because um, I think listeners really have a hard time really knowing where to go. Like they get a taste of it, but they're unsure. They don't know the systems mm-hmm. and they come back and they're frustrated. And they don't know how to implement like what a, you know, tell me a little bit about that. All right. Uh, two, I guess I'll answer that in two parts. That's fine. Um, for me, I had a, when I got into it, I had a real thirst. I, I was, I couldn't get enough. I was like, you know, I just finished this course. Wes and John was the next course. I'm, I'll sign me up, sign me up right now. I want to mm-hmm. do it. So I had a real thirst to learn more. I wanted to learn more. I wanted to learn different techniques and all, all the ins and outs. Um, but I, I think in terms of implementing the, the knowledge that you gain, the, you know, uh, the course for me, and I'm not sure if this is where you're going with this question or not, but for me, uh, my opinion is you got to just do it. I mean, you can't, you can't be afraid. Mm. Mm. Right. I mean, once you finish the course, go back there and go back to your office and 
find as many patients as you can and do as many implants as you can. High quality implants, high quality cases, not the hard cases. I gave away some work. Mm -hmm. I gave some discounts. but Because education costs something, right? Yeah. And I've considered that a big part of my education. I, I mean, I'm... I, I consider it, I continue to pay for my education back in my office. That's Absolutely. kind of the way I've looked at it. And I'm not afraid to, I don't want to say experiment, but I'm not, I'm not afraid to experiment and to try different things and learn. Right. Well, Brad, how important was it for you to find a system, process, a validated workflow of placing implants so you're not really experimenting, but you're following some type of a protocol? Was yeah, that experiment was the wrong word. That, that's, that's not the word that I meant, but... But to, to push the boundaries of, of, of what you're absolutely 100% comfortable with. That's what you're right. Comfort sense. level. Yeah. You, you were comfortable with composites. Yeah. You were comfortable with dentures. You were right. comfortable that, with that, those that's, things. That's a more accurate description. Yeah, just right. things you haven't done on before. Yeah. But you know how it needs to happen. You just have to actually do it. Exactly. exactly. Right. It, it, you know, it's a lot different going from a lecture where you're, you're you know, watching a PowerPoint and you're putting implants into a pig jaw and to actually going into, you know, your own patient, your own practice and doing that in a real person. Absolutely. That's a yep. whole different thing. Yeah. So I, th I think just getting over that, that step is a big thing. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I want to know just from you, Brad, the dental lab guy, how do you, you know, you mentioned kind of talking together about when Brad came to you and said, Hey, I'm, I'm kind of ready to do this. How do you, for a dentist out there who's, you know, maybe looking at implants as a good example of, you know, I, I think I might be interested in this. You know, how do you determine when, what's the conversation look like for you when you think somebody's ready? Because and, and I know like people listen to this are like, man, like, how does this guy know? You know, but I mean, somebody's had 30 years of experience and done a lab business. You know, you've seen a lot of you've done a lot of CT guides. You've talked a lot about implant treatment planning you know when things are good and bad. You know, you see some good and bad things. So what's that conversation? When, when does it come to a point where you feel like a dentist is ready to maybe go the, down this road of getting into implant dentistry? And, you know, what does that conversation look like? Who needs to be doing this? You know, the guys who are ready to make a change in their practice and they want to offer their patients the total solution. Um, when they want to keep the referrals in-house uh, for what they know they're confident of taking care of. Mm -hmm. And when you have a doctor calling you up and said, you know, Brad, I got this case and, you know, I, I just, I feel it's abundant bone, it's healed ridge. It, you know, I, I think I can do this. I really want to import implants into my practice. You know, when they start asking those questions, you know, they're, they're looking, mm -hmm. they're looking for some type of education what worries me, the type of education that they need is a process-oriented education, you mm -hmm. know, and, and for 30 years of my career, I've been, I've been honored to be many parts of dental education, implant education, and I always saw a lack of process, a lack of proven protocol, a lot of gaps that were in it, and what I've found from dentists is they want a systematized process to be able to implement implants into their practice the day they get done with the continuum. Mm. And they don't want the gaps. They want to have everything filled in along the way. And that's what people are looking for. So those are usually the conversations that, that I've been involved in. Mm. Um, I just got back from the AID last weekend. There was a gentleman, um, his name was Todd, and he came up to me and says, you know, I, I took a couple weekend classes. And he says, I'll be honest with you, they screwed me up. They screwed me up. I, mm. I don't know what to do. I'm confused. Mm. There's so many gaps in my learning process. And I hear that time and time and time again with dentists go out and they just do a quick little weekend class that there's those gaps. And then it actually messes them up and confuses them because yeah. they don't really know how to implement the process. Well, and because the they want to do a good job. They, want, they care about yeah. their patients yeah. and they don't want to do the wrong thing. Right. You know? So, you know, my conversations kind of lead into those types of things. Yeah. So you found that, though, over the years, there's a lack of that. There's a lack of that systematized approach. Systematized continuum. You learn step by step. You build off. It's a building block as, mm -hmm. you, as you work your way up in the process of learning. Well, we talk a lot about on the show, you know, that, uh, that we think that, that you know, there, there's a lot of discussion about, up, out there about dentistry being an art. 
and there is some art to it, no question, you know, and there's, there's creativity and there's artistry and there's a place for, you know, innovation and changes, but there's some things that just are like the right thing to do. And there's some things that aren't proven, you know? And so there's a baseline that you have to have where, you know, again, as you say, I mean, doctors want to be able to come out of these courses, like show me something that works. Give me something that'll work in all the cases that I choose. That's not, doesn't rely on my artistry, doesn't rely on me being, having to be creative to figure stuff out. It's, it's give me a system that's going to work. And yeah, that doesn't mean that in implant dentistry, there's not creativity and, you know, experimentation, quote unquote, with new techniques. But I think that there's a lot of that out there. There's a lot of people going, well, this is what works in my hands, you know, and they show this amazing case and you go, wow, that's really cool. But can you do that in your own practice? And it, and it seems like that's, it's been a big problem. It's one of the reasons why when, you know, you guys set out years ago to start doing implant education, it was the whole idea was let's give you, I mean, from a lab perspective, I mean, what's the value of that to the lab? Yeah. That, like, why would you even do that? Because you, you, you came to me and you were like, we, I need you to come up here and we need to, and every, you know, every time we sit around and we talk about in the car or on the way home about, you know, why we're doing this and why you're doing this. But, but I mean, like, what was really the reason behind all that? You know, in the lab business, you can geek out on 3D printing machines and five axis milling machines and, you know, all this cool stuff. But bottom line, it comes down to the patient. The bottom line, I've always attached myself as a lab guy to the patient to say, what's the right thing to do for the patient to give them a long term prosthetic implant? whatever it be, dental restoration, so it's a long-term commitment. It's a lot of money patients are spending on their dental care. We can't forget about that. Yeah. It's a lot of money, and they deserve the best. So if they deserve the best, you have to have clinicians that are willing to give them the best, a lab that's willing to give them the best. That's always been my drive. My, my drive to all my staff is we're not lab technicians. We're an extension of the doctor's staff. Our mm. job is to help the doctors think <laughs> and make sure they're covering all their bases to make sure they're doing the right thing for the patient. If we see something going wrong, it's our obligation to say, doctor, maybe this isn't the right way. Let's look at it different. Mm -hmm. So I've looked at things differently. So, so that's been my drive behind education. How do I get involved to help doctors push on the implant side? But you also have, have shown me pictures, and I have some in my own slide presentation that you've given me of, of train wrecks. You know, I started the presentation this morning with a train wreck. Because it teaches like train 16, 16 years ago, Wes, you know, we started Implant Solutions as a surgical guide company, a standalone surgical guide company, because my brother and I at the lab were re restoring train racks going, there's got to be a better way. Mm -hmm. And when we found co-diagnostics, you know, an, an implant software that's out there that can help doctors plan an implant prosthetically driven that drove me as a lab to bring that. It just made sense. It made sense. Now we can guide an implant from the prosthetic down versus the bone up. Yeah. It totally makes sense. So, yeah. so, so Foss, you got, so you went, you go through this continuum mm -hmm. and you finish this up and you, you get a system, you know, in your mind and you kind of know what could work. And like you said earlier, I thought, I think very well, you said, you know, you're not trying to do the hardest cases. You're trying to do the ones that, you know, fit the system that are predictable. Right. So how do you, you go back, how do you inspire your team? How do you talk to you? You're in a partnership situation, mm -hmm. right? So how do, you, how do you have that discussion? What's that look like with your partners? And what's that look like with your team? How do you take it from the course to, you know, Monday morning or a, a month from then? How do you set the goals? What's that look like? Uh, it's hard. Um, when I, before I took the courses, I, I went to my partners and I said, I'm going to take, you know, these implant courses. My goal with the courses is to start off doing single tooth posterior implants. I don't want to do aesthetic cases. I don't want to do all on fours. I don't want to do implant retained uh, dentures. I just want to do simple single tooth posterior implants and start off from there and see where it takes us. And uh, told my staff and they were on board. I mean, they, they, they love the idea of it. Took the course and, uh, you know, like, 
like Brad was starting. What to did your move. partner say? We're back there. You told your staff, but what did your partner say? They were they were cool with it. Are that were they placing implants? No, they did not place implants. So where were all the implants going? Especially, they're okay. all, all they're, everyone was referred out. Okay. So okay. So the real back up. The reason that I decided to pursue implants uh, was really two reasons. One, we had a constant request of the patients to keep things in house. Yep. Um, like I said, we're in a small town, so if they got to go to a specialist, they got to go quite a ways out of town. Yep. Mm. So we, they wanted to keep stay stay in house. Second thing I wanted to do, one big goal of mine was to try and reduce cost of the whole thing, start to finish, of the implant restoration, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So that was the two the two goals, and then it kind of took off from there. And talked to the partners about it. We all agreed it's a great idea. Let's pursue this. Start with the posterior implants and see what happens. Took the course courses and uh you know it's really taken off from there um in terms of how to get the the, the staff involved um i th- i gotta believe that excitement on the doctor's part and continued excitement on the doctor's part mm. not like the excitement where you, uh, you know you go to a course in the weekend and monday morning you're all gone ho by thursday afternoon you kind of forgot about it mm. right you got to keep that you got to keep that enthusiasm up it's the, i think it's the enthusiasm that 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 keeps the ball rolling. What do you mean by that? I mean, enthusiasm. Uh, I mean, I was, I'll stick for myself. I was, I was extremely enthusiastic. I mean, everything from. I mean, you just come in and it's like, like, guys, this is amazing. This is amazing. Like, we're going to be doing this. Well, and it's freaking yeah, awesome. That's what I did. And I explained, I mean, I, here's what I did. I, at, at the office meeting, I made a, a, a big PowerPoint presentation and I described nice. You know, what is a bone graft? How does it work? What's the membrane? You know, how does it work? <laughs> implants, what's the benefit of the implant? What's the benefit of this implant system? Why are we doing this here? What are we referring out? What are we keeping in house? You know, this whole huge presentation. I, right. I mean, everybody, you know, I gave them all color copies of the PowerPoint presentation so they can make their own notes. And then I started implementing, you know, I started writing up informed consent forms and, you know, all the different, the worksheets, you know, I, I have, I have worksheets that I have in every op for every surgery, you know, everything that we need in the op for the surgery. I started making all these different sheets and kind of took off from there. So let me just say this right here. This is leadership. That's what I'm thinking the whole time he's saying. Yeah. So here's, here's the, here's the thing. Here's what, here's what we're missing in implementation is mm. exactly what he just said. Yep. Amy Morgan said this in one of our, in one of yep. our podcasts with her. And she says a leader has to have a vision, has to have a mission statement, and you have to create brand identity. You went back and you just took the bull by the horns and you said, we're going to do this. And you got excited and you created value for you Mm -hmm, and what you're doing. And that passed on to the thing. This is why so many dentists, John, struggle. Yeah. Yeah. Because in the end, I think, you know, everyone wants to be led. Yes. Everyone wants to be led. That includes the leaders. You know, we all we all want to have a, a direction. You know, we all need that from somewhere. And I think that your your you know your team is is especially wanting to be led. And and I think that many times that's why these things don't happen is because people don't just go you know hey this this means something to me. And so you know we we kind of discount that you know yep. that how important it is to come back. And it's not a one-day thing. It's not like a two-day thing. It's not a three-day thing. It's, it takes a long it's, time. It takes a long time. Yeah, a lot, it, it takes a lot of effort. It does. And I, I think what you really got to do is find a way to get your staff excited. Because no matter how excited you are, if they think it sucks, then it's never going to work. Right. So what do you think? Like, Give me an example, I mean, if you can, of something that you feel like. Where, when do you think your team or your staff got on board with it? Like, Was it a case you did? Was it just the thought of what this could do for your patients, or was it just that they believed in what you were talking about? What was it that you think got them to where they I think got it? Was it? Two things um, off the top of my head. Two things, two instances. Uh, one was the first successful case when they saw actually what we're doing in the office, and they, you know, I showed them the X-rays. We explained to them this is what we did, this is why we did, this is how we did it, uh, all the ins and outs, the intricacies of that, and everyone kind of went. Dang, that's really cool. Yeah, we just did that. We the, did that. We did it in the office here. It, it was a team effort. You know, mm-hmm. everyone from the front office calling in prescription medications to you know me, the assistants, hygiene, uh, 
you know, talking about implants. I think that's one thing. The other thing is, is, uh, is having uh, my assistants come to the course and actually get educated on mm. everything that they have to do. Pieces and parts. And, yeah. yeah. Everything from pieces to parts to talking to the patients to how to clean the drills. Yep. You know, how do you sterilize? All, I, every, everything. I forgot that they came. Yeah. 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 yeah, really? yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting to hear that. You know, I think that what, you know, it's, it's just so funny because it's the same thing we hear. You know, we, we've heard people go to courses and this could be, it doesn't have to be for implants. It's like for anything. And they, they come back and they, they're like, yeah, I never really did that. You know, and we were listening, nah, not to be kind of careful, but you know, we're listening to podcasts. Uh, I don't know. It's been a little while, Wes, we talked about this and, you know, you, you hear people talk about how, you know, I went to this course, never really did that. Went to this course, never really did that. Went to this course. And there's a there's a tremendous amount of regret, I think, for somebody who cares about doing a good job about well, honestly, you know, not implementing that. But it, it takes a lot of work, like yeah. you're saying. It's a it's a lot of work. But that when you get those successes, that's where I feel like it really takes off. Once you start hearing your hygienist saying to that patient, you know what? We do this here now. Right. And we're doing it not just doing it here, but like Dr. Foss is awesome at this. Mm-hmm. And like, oh, he a, went to high level courses. It's a personal commitment, right? It's a lot of time away. Yeah. It's a professional equipment, uh, professional commitment and a financial commitment. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. If you're going to do it right, it's a big deal. Absolutely. So it comes down to the easy part is taking the money and going to a course. Yeah. The easy right. part's learning the content. The hard part is what we're talking about. 100%. It's Im- implementation. And that's why we're talking about this is because implementation is the hardest thing to do in really anything in business yeah. is that to take something and change it. Change is not easy. And so what you did is first thing you did is you established leadership. You said, okay, partners, they gave you the charge. You went and got educated. You came back and you were excited. Now, what I want to do is I want to shift gears a little bit because I know you're not just doing single posteriors <laughs> mm-hmm. okay because that was the goal is that you you said you know i just want to do posterior single units that's all i want to do i want to put that to put that in practice but that's changed for you really fast mm-hmm. how did that happen because you are starting to do more dental implant therapy what got you comfortable with more um i would say experience and the system uh you know, the more you do, the more you see, the more comfortable you get with that system. Not only with the system, but with doing surgical procedures, mm-hmm. whether it's laying a flap or drilling a drilling a hole in bone, doing atraumatic extractions, you know, and then working the prosthesis after that. Working with dental crafters and bred at dental crafters is, you know, they are a huge help. Um, uh, How do you use them? Call them every day. <laughs> yeah, I'm not I the call, only. I'm not the only one that calls my lab. I call, I call them all the time. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I really. I uh, I call uh, dental, dental crafters and implant solutions all the time. If I have questions, if I have concerns, if I don't understand something, if I need help along the way understanding something, if I want their opinion about a prosthesis, whether it's a single unit crown or an all on four denture. Mm-hmm. So this is what the benefit uh, is of having you know, lab. And I know that like you're listening to this, you probably think we're like, this show is brought to, brought to you. By, <laughs> but no, I mean, it doesn't, I don't get the truth. I mean, you know, we hate to, and I know Brad's here with us. It's not, it's not about which lab it is. It's no. just the benefit of having a lab yeah. that has experience that gets it and ha- being a resource where you can call and you can have these yeah, types of discussions. I'm, I, I'm not, I don't want to be everybody's lab and I can't be everybody's lab. Yeah. The point is, the lab is a resource, and it should be an extension of your staff. Apart and you should be finding a partner. Lab. Absolutely. Access, access to a lab is a good paramount. Lab. A, good a good lab that lab. cares, a good lab yeah. that wants to do the right thing. You know, they're not about the dollar. It's about the right quality of care. And when you have, find a lab that has that passion, team up with them, be loyal to them. Yeah, loyalty. Yeah. That's what I was hoping you would say, because uh, loyalty the loyalty is, is, not, is, is completely gone today. Like It's like we're jumping around here. I did, this crown didn't fit. I'm switching labs. Right. It's like it's like Bob Winter said. Mm. Bob Winter said, you know, the problem today is he said they'll new, you'll do nine crowns perfect for somebody, and you do one wrong, and they jump ship, and they go to another lab. 
Right. Or they and shift. all you ever call a lab boat is what that one went wrong. You don't ever tell them about the 10 good ones. No, you don't. You know? So, you know, I think for, for Brad Foss over here, the implementation has been made easy because you've surrounded yourself, one, with an amazing team in your office that believes in you. You created that believability because one, you're enthusiastic about it. You're likable, mm-hmm. and they, they trust you because you're not you're, you're saying what you're going to do, and you're doing what you say, mm-hmm. and you follow through with it, and you're continuing to do that. And that's what's hard. You have to wake up every morning and go in there and enthusiastically want to place dental implants. I have this one slide. It's not in my slide deck right now, but if you think dental implants, you'll see dental implants and it's a mindset. Yeah. And I, I want to ask you about, you know, just how your, how your day has changed. Yeah. Okay. Because, you know, one of the things that is always comes up in these courses, you know, as we get toward the end is, you know, how do you, as a new implant placer, um, find time for these cases or, or schedule these cases? You know, how did you implement that in terms of, um, how does your team schedule, you know, so if somebody comes in, you discover that they need an implant, go through, maybe it's through hygiene or through new patient, whatever it is. What's your protocol as far as scheduling that as a new implant placer? Not that you are now, but when you first started, um, what are you telling your front desk? Like how much time do I need? How does that change the way your day looks? How do you feel comfortable with the, having the right amount of time or scheduling that at the right time dealing with hygiene checks in a general dental office? Well, <clears throat> when I first started off and if it was not an emergency, um, I would schedule excessive time. I mean, I had four hours for a single unit implant extraction, immediate placement, just cause I didn't know how much time I needed. I, I wanted, and your partners were cool with that. Yeah, very. They they did all my hygiene checks for me. Whoa! Yeah, that's I mean, cool. It's, it's, that is that is awesome. It's awesome. It really. I'm, I'm very lucky. But that's that's how I started off, and I was so well, you, I was lucky enough to be able to have that, to, to be able to experience that. Yeah. Hmm. So and, if you don't do that, you do kind of what similar I've known other people to do is that you come in on a day when your hygienists aren't there. Or I'll come in on a Friday. Right. Yeah. When I, and you work half a day or whatever. Close Friday, yeah. Right. I have all the time in the world of no one bothering me. No one bothers No, no hygiene checks. Right. No words. stress. Nobody's looking over your shoulder. Yeah. yeah. That kind of thing right there, that's how you get started. And once you get to where you're like, okay, I figured this out. Like mm-hmm. I got the guide situation. I got all these situations figured out. Then you can start incorporating it in. Mm-hmm. Is this going to replace procedures for you? You think, or is it just something that's an additional thing you're going to offer? What do you mean? Like, re- do some, is this going to give you? Are you going to do less? Endo? Is this going to make you? Yeah, is this going to make, yeah, is gonna make you do less? Don't hold less, back. Right, just say it. Do less of something. Because you else. already said you hate endo. Yeah, that was <laughs> easy. You're yeah. already not doing it. Right. But I mean, is this is something you see that you know is going to change? You know that hey, I'm, I'm going to be doing less of something else because you're doing more of this. Like your you production just, got replaced here. I don't think it's replacing anything. I think it's just an adjunct to everything else. So you didn't do this to make more money? No, not at all. Wow. No, not at all. No. no. Why, did, why did you do this then? Uh, add value to the practice, add value to my patients, and so you're quite like, honestly, I just really wanted to start doing surgery. <laughs> that's cool. It's, that is it, cool, it, it man. It sounds like a dumb answer, but that's No, no, that's it's not, because you know what? To keep growing in your career, somebody once told me that you need to incorporate something new or something different in your practice mm-hmm. to keep growing every 18 months. I think that it's, a, it's yeah. interesting because you know, there's the right a thing. lot of reason why, reasons why we see people come to implant continuums, you know, and, and you talk to a lot of people when implants are a great example because it is a profitable procedure, can mm. be a profitable procedure. But when you start off with that as a primary reason for doing it, man, man, it can be a minefield. You know, right. sometimes that can work out. But it can't be a worse reason to get into I, it. That's what I'm saying is right. I think it's the worst reason. I'm not saying it's I'm not saying it's not an understandable reason. Mm-hmm. Right. We all there's nothing wrong with like with I'm slow. Being more I need to do this. Right. Mm, you might that, need you, you might, might, need, might want to look at why you're slow. You might want to look at that why you're slow. That. Yeah. You let's, might, might have another problem. That. Yeah. Caution right there. You yeah. Know, let's go back to the continuum for a minute here. Mm-hmm. We put together, John and I, working with Brad and brought on some people to help us. Um, that Brad and I kind of started out doing these weekend warrior courses years ago. Many years ago. Yeah. A long yeah. Time. Many years ago, a long time ago. And that led to, you know, last year, uh, you know, Brad and I are actually sitting upstairs in the coffee cabin 
And I said, Brad, I said, you know, we're, we're running our necks off here, man, like trying to make these courses work. And I said, and he was like, you know, he was like, I don't know. He's like, we need to do something bigger. And I said, man, I was like, can we bring some other people on? You were like, you said this, you were like, thank you. Thank you. You know, like, <laughs> and I was like, you, I was like, do you think John would want to do it? And you were like, man, I don't know. You, can you ask him? So I asked him, you know, and he said, yes. And, and I said, well, what could we get Yawn? And he was like, yeah, Yawn would be great. We're just, you know, we groom him. And then I was like, you know, we need somebody to implement. Let's bring Todd on. And so this kind of conversation just started upstairs in this cabin. Hmm. And, and, and now, and we've developed this amazing curriculum and it's called restorative driven implants. And, um, I mean, we have some amazing people behind the scenes helping us. We have great support teams. We have Argon that came on board. We have Kettenbach that came on board. We have the Dental Crafters Network that came on board. All the logistics that came on board to make this happen. Logistics, not salespeople standing in the back trying to sell you something. That's right, logistics. Logistics. Like, you don't walk into RDI and see some company stand in the back trying to sell you trying something. to sell you something because we're well, selling at all like not at all right no. you're selling a system right and a way of doing things right implants are implants right right but it's how you do it so we've been talking about the system of implementation but let's talk about the system of rdi for a minute mm. okay that system starts with some online education that sets the foundation for dental implants and one of the reasons why we did that is because there's mechanical part of this but then there's this biological part i want you to tell me how much it means to understand and how we've systematized the mechanical and the biological so that you can actually be a thinker and a doctor and think on the fly because that's our goal is to help you to think on the fly but systematize that. How does RDI help you do that? Ooh. Yeah. Huh. I, I ask he's... Dang. Yeah. yeah. Deep uh, question for yeah. such a late evening. No kidding. Yeah, cheers. Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> After a big steak dinner too, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. So how does RDI systematize the biological and the mechanical components? Yeah. For implementation. Yeah. Whew. All right. So... I was talking to, I think I was talking to John or Jan earlier to, tonight, and uh, we were talking about how no matter how much information you give out, you know, over the course, over the course of a course, um, you can't cover every possible scenario. It's impossible, right? So you got to re- have a really good grasp of the biology and the mechanics, the function of what you're trying to do. Not only the mechanics of the prosthesis, but the mechanics of the bone, right? The bone holding the implant, holding the prosthesis. So no matter how much you learn over the course, you're going to run into a a hiccup, Mm -hmm. right? So you got to think on the fly and go, can I do this or can I not do this? What if I go this way or how about this way? What are my different options? You know, adapt and overcome, right? And I think RDI sets a fantastic foundation for that. Mm. Uh, I mean, we all run into hiccups. And the hiccups that I've run into, I was able to overcome by going back to the fundamentals that were taught, be it biologic or functional. That make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's your question? Yeah, Yeah. that's what it's all about. I mean, it's trying to trying to create a, a, a way of thinking um, where you know if I follow certain principles that I'm going to be successful. And those are based upon science. They're based upon evidence. And it doesn't mean the scenario is always going to be the same, but the principles are always the same. Right. right. And, the, and, and two, trying to... I feel like that one thing that I have always tried to do, and Brad's pushed me to do this, is try to quantify things Mm -hmm. because dentists like to quantify. Now, what that means is, is we like a perio probe, right? You know, we like to say that ones, twos and threes are normal, right? And anything above a three is bad. And you need a scaling and root planing when it goes to four five or six. 
And so if we can quantify things and you can use instruments to measure or whatever to measure, that you can actually get a predictable outcome. One thing about restorative driven implants is the name, Mm -hmm. okay? It's restorative driven implants. Because that's the end result, isn't it? Yeah, that's the end result. What, what, you, you talked about that you saw train wrecks and you got into guide fabrication. We named it this, you know, John, you were sitting in a restaurant or a bar one night and you were like, man, restorative driven implants, that's what it's all about. And we all were kind of like, we kind of keep coming back to that. Yeah. And that's why you started your, your uh, implant solutions business. So it's what it's all about, the restorative part of that. And this is where I think as a, as a restorative dentist, you know, we, uh, another good reason to get into this is that you see problems coming in from specialists. I mean, we have a lot of great specialists that we work with, but we also sometimes see real problem cases come in and sometimes they're not placed by us. Hopefully they're not. Uh, but you know, for years and years, especially I think in small towns, you mentioned small towns, I'm in a small town and, uh, I don't mean that every small town is means it's bad, but there's some sometimes the quality unfortunately isn't super high. Maybe that's because there's a lack of competition. I don't know what it is, but you see stuff come in and it's like, what am I going to do with this? You know, and the patient's definitely not getting the best, and the lab's having to fix the problem, and I'm having to fix the problem. That's frustrating. And having that control over a case, mm. you know, knowing that if you follow the principles, you follow the system that you have the, the ability to, to produce a result that you can see through from start to finish. Again, it, it really is not about the profitability. <laughs> Again, it's like that, that comes with just the fact that you hopefully get good at this. It comes, mm-hmm. but it's, it's, it's having control over it. It's being able to do a great job. And then it's also being able to give the patient the best. Like Brad said, all of a sudden you start to go, you know, yeah, I, I put it exactly where I needed it to go. Yeah. And it's also the knowledge of knowing that, whatever your comfortability is or your, what you feel comfortable doing from mm-hmm. your practice. And if you don't, when you go through RDI, we're pretty clear that if you don't feel comfortable, refer, find a good yes. re- referral, you know, and refer out those yeah, cases that even, you don't feel we comfortable We even try with. to say like, okay, here's where I would refer. It's absolutely. Yeah. Like a question came up today. Well, how do you choose a referring doctor? Based on well, your knowledge mm-hmm. That right. you know, you quiz them, you sit down and have coffee with them, and if they, you know, go away and you say, you know, that's probably not the right guy for me. Right. Find another one. Find another one. Interview. Yeah, yeah interview these people. Because we feel like, the, you know, the future of dental implants, as more general dentists are placing implants, is, is a, 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 hopefully less of an adversarial relationship mm. and more of a, a working together, you know, uh, as a team with our surgeons to where we can have these conversations and we can say, Hey, here, here's, I'm trying to further my knowledge. Mm. So here's what I know. Tell me what you know so that I can know what, what needs to go to you, what needs to go to me. I can help you to have a better result. You can help me to have a better result. Everybody does better. Everybody does more business. The patient in the end is a better product who's getting the benefit. The patient gets the benefit rather than this being this battle over, Who's, who gets to do what or when or which cases go to me at, you know, the, the goal is not to try to do everything. The goal is to try to do, do everything right. Do it right. And yeah. know no when, matter who does it. and know when you don't have the right. skill set. And, and that's the value. We always, I talk about this with some of my patients all the time, you know, about in medicine, you know, the value of a great, you know, general practice medical doctor is when there's a problem with your health, you know, they refer you somewhere. And that's like a huge value of a general practice medical doctor is when they can say, you know what, this is not my specialty. I need to refer it. And it's out of my wheelhouse. It's out of my wheelhouse. Mm-hmm. And as general dentists, as surgeons, um, you know, as a general dentist who place implants, part of the reason that we take these courses, part of what RDI is about is, is learning what you should be doing, learning what you shouldn't be doing, learning what your limitation is. And part of your value is knowing when this case needs to be referred. And the team that we have assembled our four mentors that we have within this mm. uh, of, of general practice of, of the, the, the doctor mentors. And then you get two lab mentors, but the four doctor mentors, it was adamant for me. And you guys saw me lock the door in the conference room and all four of you guys. And we had to sit down and say, gentlemen, we all have to agree on the protocol mm-hmm. all the way through. How many hours did we spend oh, ironing man. out our protocol? Because I didn't, we didn't want to have, confusion. And mm-hmm. I've seen that with other courses where one mentor stands up and lectures, 
and they talk about one concept, their protocol, and then the next day another mentor stands up and then they talk about their protocol, which contradicts the first protocol. Right. And then the, then the student paying for the course going, I just need a process. I just need a system. And they just confuse me because two of the leaders that I just hired to train me just confused me. Yeah, because he just and, said, use this suture and you're saying, use this suture. And now I'm confused. As simple as that, PJ, PTFE, what do I use? So we ironed out all of our protocols mm-hmm. at at so RDI. Where everyone can agree. So very when cohesive. Very, cohesive. very cohesive. And 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 when you guys it walk flows when, from lecture to lecture, from mentor to mentor. Absolutely. That's awesome. That's and good. therefore so, there's no confusion. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's talk a little bit about RDI. We haven't really explained a little bit about what it is. Mm-hmm. Restorative driven implants started starts off with about four hours of online modules mm-hmm. where we talk about the mechanics of dental implants, how implants are engineered, why they're made the way they're made, and some history behind why they're made the way they're made. It helps you to understand why an implant is made today and why it looks the way it looks today. Dennis Tarnow said that he teaches his residents about thread design Mm -hmm. because it's important to understand that thread design and surface technology affects how you may do or treat a case. And so we start out with that. We actually go through those those online modules are completed in your own home. You can watch them on your phone. You can watch them on your laptop, tablet, whatever. And, um, and then even Brad has a, se- a series in there, a module on how to take a good comb beam machine. Mm. One thing, once you sign on to R- RDI, you have access to these things. Yeah for a long time. And so you can go back and revisit that. Like you said, you needed to go back and revisit some of the principles, Brad. And so once you've completed those online sessions, you arrive in a location. Just so happens we have Nashville coming up here. We'll mention those dates here in the spring. But you arrive to a more honed lecture now. We're all kind of on the same page. And I begin to teach Hilled Ridge Placement. How do we place implants in a healed ridge? And we go through a protocol, and then we start working on mechanics in the afternoon. Actually, how do you use implant drills? How should you use them? Should you run them fast? Should you run them slow? We actually have some bone block there that simulates hard bone and soft bone. And we, we, put, patient, we put students through that online and that first series in to really help them to understand the basics, the very basics of dental implant. And then talk about Jan and what he's going to talk about in surgical principles that weekend, um, Brad, or even John. Well, I mean, I, you know, I'm just say, you know, Jan is everybody. I think, I think the thing we start, you know, you mentioned this, that you just did, you hadn't done a lot of surgery, Brad, you know, you hadn't done a lot of surgery in general. And I mean, what are you weakest at? in surgery, it's just handling tissue, you know, and what do I do? How do I suture it? How do I, how do I lay a flap that's, right. that's, that's safe? How do you socket graft predictably? Right. What do you use? What yeah. material? What, right. what do I bone? punch? Do I flap? Do I punch? Right. Do I flap? Yeah. Like right. when do Where I do these things? Tissue? Yeah. So, you know, after you finish Jan's portion, you're going to go back home and you're going to start thinking about these things and you're yeah. going to do some more online education and immediate extraction, immediate placement. And you do about two or three hours of that. And then you're going to arrive for series two And we're going to cover and recap and revisit all of these things that we've been talking about in an interactive session and on that on that series two. And then John comes in on day two after we do some pig jaws in the afternoon. John comes in on day two and he has an all day hands on lecture and hands on on prosthetics like it's all about the restoration, guys. And John's going to go through all kinds of like how do you what abutments to choose? What's screwmentation? What's a stock abutment? What's a milled abutment? And and you might think, well, that's kind of elementary. But to be honest with you, there's some you know protocols you can learn that'll help you deliver a restoration that just really works great. Well, yeah, and I think in the end, I mean, this is where it all begins. Like we right. talk about that, if you don't understand where the tooth needs to go and how much room you need for the abutment, how much what material you're going to choose you don't really have any business putting the implant. Right. You now, know, you really gotta understand that. Now, really, the really where the, where the rubber meets the road is series mm-hmm. three. Yeah. And that's where we're going to get to place some implants. And with, you know, our class size, we've limited it to 16 people. 
And you so get we got small, st- small student, student to mentor relationship. That's here. huge. That was one of the two, two to one, two to one on series three, two, two to, to one. one. That means you're going to have a mentor working chair side with you. How, how you, whenever you did that, like I was in your room, I think the second day of series mm-hmm. three, how, I mean, we had a great time one, but you're an assistant and a doctor. You switch back and forth with your, your, your co-doctor there. Right. How about that experience, uh, placing that many implants over a weekend? How was that? Oh, it was, I mean, obviously it was awesome. Right. I mean, you know, me and my doctor partner, whatever you want to call him, um, you know, I would place implants. uh, Well, he would assist. We'd switch. I'd assist while he would place implants. And then the mentor, in in, in my case, it was you, Wes, uh, you know, where you're in there, uh, you know, helping out, answering questions, everything from, uh, extraction procedures, grafting, suturing, you know, everything right. you just mentioned. And then really uh, bringing all the different aspects of the first two weekends, the first two sessions together to make it happen. Mm-hmm. Right. So, so series surgery day. So series three is not, it's not just you. Who'd you bring with you on series three? Brought my assistants with. You brought two of your assistants. That's huge. So, that was what, huge. so, so Wes, tell me a little bit about what goes downstairs while yeah. the doctors are upstairs on day one of series three. What's going on downstairs? Yeah, with- so included in this price is two assistants from your office can come with your doctor. And my assistant of 10 years that's been chairside with me placing implants for as long as she's been an assistant. She Dr. started Dr. Megan. Yeah, we call her Dr. <laughs> Megan. She's, she was 19 when she started with me. And she's been with me for 10 years, and she basically puts the assistants through implant boot camp. You know, she, they do hands-on. They do stuff down in the, I mean, they're, they're showing them how to set up rooms, how to do sterilization, how to clean instruments, when to replace them, how to stock implants, what an implant is. They even do some of that stuff. But it, but it really helps those assistants to get charged up for what's going on. And I think that's kind of unique that you can bring your assistance to an implant course because I think it gives you going back into the office on Monday morning, some people that say, hey, I just saw my doctor place some implants in this restorative and driven mm-hmm. implants course. Well, that really helps, helps, helps with the implementation too, because they've been involved in the, mm-hmm. in the, in, in the placement, right? They're there during some of the surgery, also, right? You know, and they know what's going yeah, on. Yeah, because we understand. bring them up there on yeah. day two, and they get to kind of help out and assist, and kind of yeah. pitch in and see really so some stuff. They get all excited about it too, and not only me going back Monday morning, but them going back and going, well, actually, this is a really cool thing. Well, and I think that that's a unique feature of RDI, but I think the thing that a lot of times people don't uh, kind of understand about it, and we even saw that as this last session is how patients, how we get patients, you know, that Mm. many times you go to a course and you either have to bring your own patient, um, which means you got to deal with complications that you may not know how to deal with when you get home, when you got to bring that person on an airplane, you know, somewhere, uh, or you, you might have like one patient, you know, and where we are, we've got a situation where we've got multiple excellent patients. And these aren't just patients showing up and you're doing all the work up. These are patients that are pre-screened, pre-worked up, cone beam CTs in every case, guides were appropriate, provisionals prefabricated. So the thinking has been done. Now you're still going to go through the thinking. You're going to go back and figure out why this was planned the way it was. But we basically pre-select these cases to where you come in and we're going to get cases that fit with the type of case that you're actually going to do in your real practice. So many times we hear stories about people getting into these continuums where You know, they edentulate a patient and put in eight implants on the upper. And so you get to put in one of those eight. Now, that is as far from being realistic as you're ever going to do for your first case or your hundredth case in a real general dental practice. That's wonderful that you're getting to put in implants. But it's it's, not really real world. It's not real world. Yeah, because real world is what I said today is most of the time I'm taking out premolars and molars and putting in implants. Right. And it's you know? a single, it's one and two Hildridge site in the posterior, or it's a, it's an immediate premolar. And so you're getting these types of cases mm-hmm. that are pre-selected so that you're going to have real world experience. I mean, I'm sure you saw that, Brad. I mean, you, you know, again, you, you did cases, I'm sure in RDI session three, that were cases similar to what you've been doing since. I mean, is that, is that, was that some of your experience? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we did. In, in my my case, my scenario, we did several single unit cases. We did a two unit or three unit bridge, um, two unit, three unit implant retained bridge. 
Uh, we even did, I think we finished an all-on-four case just for kind of... Like we yeah, placed, we were, we placed were three more implants of, I think, a uh, patient that already had that, four that's placed right. in. That's yeah. right. so. And so you're not going to go, and, it, and I'm not it's saying... several patients. It's not just one, yeah. one patient. It's multiple and people. And we're not saying that it's bad to just put in implants, I mean, and get the repetitions, but... You know, we're not we're not going to send you to some foreign country where you're just putting in random implants or random. And you don't even see the you outcome. Don't know what's going on, and no one's no one's people just screened them. You just yeah. walk in and start going through like a mechanical series. You know, we're going to engage you mentally, where you go through a thought process to mm-hmm. where you can come back and apply that again, same systematic thought process to your patients, and you can remember, oh yeah, I saw a case just like this two weeks ago. This is what I'm comfortable with because I thought through it. We talk through it, and then we have a nice recap of those cases the following days after surgery, where yeah, we talk awesome. about what we learn. Yeah, and and so I, uh, it's it's something that I think um, it's it's hard to to find uh, a curriculum that's going to make you I think come out feeling as confident about day to day real dentistry, being prepared for that kind of thing. It's it's something we man we spend a lot of time preparing this continuum. To be that way, where it's realistic. So let's talk. Let's talk about after. All right. Series three, Friday, all day surgery. All right. Saturday, all day surgery. Saturday night, mm. we get to go out and have a little fun. Mm-hmm. Okay. We get to go celebrate. We got a little graduation and that, little, and little live music. We got some drinks and some hors d'oeuvres. We get to have a little party afterwards to celebrate our successes. Food's and, amazing. And, and <laughs> kind of, you know, uh, Make some new friends, which we've made along the way, the way with the sixteen people, and then and then Sunday comes. Mm-hmm. And we got half day Sunday, so half day Sunday. That's Doctor Todd. So Doctor Todd owns a company called Dem- Summit Dental Consulting. He owns several dental practices. And there's <laughs> several. There's several. N- there's nobody that knows systems like Doctor Haley. Mm. How do you implement? So what we were talking about earlier with with Brad is how do you get back to your practice? How do you get your staff geared up? What paperwork? What documentation do I need? How do I talk to the patients? You know, how do you implement on Monday morning? What do I need to purchase to get going on this? Mm-hmm. Um, Dr. Haley takes a half a day, and he talks about what do you do Monday morning? Right. How do I implement? Mm-hmm. So it kind of finalizes the whole thing. It kind of brings it to fruition of now I've, I've came, mm-hmm. I've learned, I brought my staff, I got them fired up, and then I have some training on how do I implement Monday morning. Well, if you've been listening to the show for any amount of time, you know, you know that uh, we've been the whole time. We we opened, uh, almost opened the season last year talking about where we launched this. You know, you guys yeah, remember it it's been a while. In January. Yeah. yeah. This is really almost season. It's Yeah, it's been almost a season ago, you know, that we were talking about the launch. Of and we've this. had two classes since. Yeah. We're keeping this small right now. Yeah. And so I just want to kind of throw out there that if you're, if you're listening to this and, you know, this is, you think, hey, man, this is for me. I want to, I want to get involved with this. How can you get involved with this? Well, you can go to restorativedrivenimplants.com. You can check out what's going on. We mentioned earlier that we're going to have our next session in Nashville, which we're excited about because and Nashville. And that's just Series 1 and Series 2 in Nashville, right? Right. But series 3, we always come back to a beautiful facility in northern Wisconsin. We've teamed up with Peter, Peter Christensen Dental Center, and they're the, the people who are gracious to allow us to work on their patients and get good, yeah, high-quality state of state-of-the-art facility. You know, yeah. right. so, so Where anybody three, from any state Wisconsin. can come without having to have a Wisconsin license, Don't need a license. and be able to, to practice... And 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 be in an have educational excellent patients right. and provide and give back to a community and give back. We had, we did over a hundred thousand dollars worth of donated dentistry in northern Wisconsin, and we'll do more uh, this fall. So what a mm-hmm. great way to give back yeah. to to a community. Yeah. So series one in February, series two in March, both in Nashville. You won't be disappointed by Nashville. If you've never been there, man, it's what our a place. back door. It's our yeah. It's Wes and I are real excited about that because it's within driving distance for us. And then coming back in April to Wisconsin for Series Three, um, so go check it out. You know, get go get signed up if this is something you want to do. You've been thinking about it. You know, you've gotten to hear not only from some of the mentors there and the lab support, but also from somebody who's he's been through it. You know, done it, and 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 that it it really it really works. Yeah. Yeah. So hey, we're, thanks for being on the show. Yeah. Yeah. This is awesome. Well, thanks we've got me. one more thing that I really wanted to talk to you about before we end the show and. Clinically, we've been talking a lot about 
these socket classifications. And there's been some discussion around should we do 2C sockets in the anterior? And Dennis Tarnow was <laughs> I, can't, I can't do it we man can't. we were just we were gonna try to make we it we were like, gonna try it we were gonna, <laughs> we were gonna try to <laughs> yeah. where is this going oh, oh. <laughs> yeah he's like all right i'm out of here okay hold on all yeah, right. well we john and i talked about it. i was like way too late for that. it was too late i couldn't do it man i couldn't you do it. almost held it together. i screwed, you screwed that I, up screwed, big time screwed it all up. i couldn't go on man it's too late well i'll tell you it's been a great time you know hanging out with these guys i mean it's a it's it's a pleasure uh, just I know personally for me to get to have gotten to know all these guys mm. I know it's been fun you know getting to be involved you know whenever you're doing something you feel like you're doing it at a high level with people that you respect um, it's it's a lot of fun and so it's just been it's just been enjoyable it's been you know? great. a lot of great people you know yeah. I uh, we had an oral surgeon in this group and he yeah. called me this week and That's he's awesome. like he's like Brad I gotta tell you did you do all that online stuff I said well it was a group effort with all of us he's like amazing he said, what you guys are doing is state of the art. It's systematized, and it really makes me feel good as an oral surgeon mm. to be here and watch how you guys teach people right how to do it right, but yet teach them how to refer out when they need to refer out. That was awesome. Well, Great compliment. if it's something you're interested in, check it out, restoredtodrivenimplants.com. And we, of course, want to always encourage you, you know, stay, stay up with us, you know, connect with us at Dental Guys on social media. Go to thedentalguys.net. Check us out on Facebook. And now... Hey. On Instagram. Instagram. Check yep. us out. So you millennials that have been asking, and even you <laughs> younger than millennials, whatever you want to call yourselves, that have been asking, all right, we're on it. We're on We we're have on an Instagram, Instagram account. account. Yes, yep. it's the dental guys. All right, so go it check it so out. It wasn't so instant for you, huh? No, not, it was not, kind it was of a little the late not Instagram. so Instagram. Yep. <laughs> yeah, but, but connect with us. Tell us what you like about what we're doing on the show. Tell us what you want to hear more about. Give us some feedback on what you want to see in an implant continuum. What do you want to learn? What's holding you back? from learning how to do this because we'd love to know we want to we want to you know continue to develop what we're doing and what we're talking about on the show so for wes for brad for brad foss both brads it's the brad and brad show and for john it's been fun time here with the dental guys we'll see you next time 